Having the best plumbers, whether you're a plumbing company owner or whether you're a homeowner wanting to hire plumbers, guess what? You need the very best plumbers. So let's talk to my special guest, Scott. Scott, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, my name's Scott. Uh, I work at Milestone. Uh, I'm the uh, plumbing uh, operations director. And uh, so basically I just run the, the plumbing department at Milestone. How important is it? Because I mean, you hear a lot of the horror stories of people calling a plumber. Somebody goes out, they either do them wrong. I got a call one time about a lady who had a gas leak in her attic. Plumber come out and said, it's going to be 10 grand to place the, the yard service on the side. I've already turned off your gas. Sign this piece of paper if you want me to continue. And she didn't do it, thank God. Mm -hmm. So we went out and they had three leaks in the attic. We fixed, had her gas turned back on that day. Some people just want to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So... To me, it starts with hiring the right plumbers. Right. How do you go about hiring the right people? That way, when you send them out to your customers' houses, you know you're sending the right people out there. Uh, they got to go through a pretty good screening process. We have a recruiting department, and they are reaching out to all these licensed plumbers in the Metroplex uh, through uh, all the licensing lists that you can find online, and they're making cold calls to these guys. And But we're looking for the right fit, people that match up with our core values, um, that makes sure that we're going to treat our customers correctly. They're going to be a great team member, a good fit for us, somebody that's that's worth investing training into um, before we ever make the decision to bring them on our team. It's not uh, just because you have a license uh, that you're allowed to get on. You, you, you got to be able to pass a drug test. We actually hair follicle drug test our guys, so we're not the FBI, but it would seem like it sometimes. All those things ensure us that we have the right person in the building. Once we get them in the building, we got to train them the right way that we want them to perform work at your home. And I like, I like the way you talked about training them the right way. You don't just hire a plumber and they're in the van the next day running calls. Mm -hmm. They really haven't learned your system. They, they don't know your pricing. They don't know much about your company or your culture, why you do what you do. What's your onboarding process look like? So, uh, and it's funny you mentioned that. I, when we come... Uh, when we have an interview with a guy, I tell him it's going to be four to six weeks before you ever even get your own truck. You're going to be riding around with one of our guys in the certain position that you're going to be in, um, and he's going to teach you all the ins and outs of what we do. Along with that, you're also going to do new hire training for about a few days uh, with one of our managers, and he's going to go over everything you should have learned in the truck one more time with you one-on-one -on -one before you ever get your truck. Um, and that four to six week training process is how to do all the paperwork, how to, how we treat our customers as soon as we walk in the door, the systems and processes that we use to communicate with our customers, all those types of things have to happen before I ever feel comfortable giving a set of keys to the truck. Those are two of the most important parts of it. But after that, after you've got them onboarded and to me, the onboarding process is great because mm -hmm. that weeds out a lot of people. Oh yeah. They come through that and they're like, look, I'm not doing all this. Okay. Have a great day. But after that, there's training. Training doesn't just stop at, at four to six weeks, does no. it? No, no, no. There's continual training. Uh, our, um, our responsible master plumber, David, he does a really good job at doing continual education. We have our own lab in our own building. And every Monday, we have technical training. So that's no matter if you've been with our company for four years, 10 years, or four months, you're required to show up on that Monday meeting to learn what new technical training that David has for you. And, and how often do the guys get trained? Are they in like once a month, every other month, or how often do they get called in? Uh, so, well, so we actually have um, classes. So uh, there are guys that we trust that have been doing this for a really long time that uh, our responsible master plumber has signed off on. But the rest of the guys, uh, we actually have once a week. So it's it's every week. Uh, there will be a about 8 to about 10 o'clock uh, in the morning training done on anything specific to things that they actually don't know about. So we take a list from them, ask them, hey, what do you need more training on? What do you need to learn? What do you need to learn? What What do you not feel comfortable out there that you absolutely need more help with? And David got that list and it's like 23 weeks worth of stuff. And then we'll ask again when we run, when we run through all those things because we're always continually gonna have guys that maybe were either afraid to, to, to say, hey, I, I don't know this because they're in a room of all their peers and don't wanna say they don't know something. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually are like, no, I'd rather you speak up and tell us that you don't know so that we can teach you. That way you're confident. And it's be more beneficial for us as a business that you tell us what you don't know so that I can train you. It's better for you to be out there doing things you know how to do versus not know how to do. And, and here's the deal. This benefits the homeowners because now the homeowners know that when they call Milestone, they're getting plumbers that have either been through a training program, 
going through a training program, but also getting weekly continuous training. That way they're constantly improving. When plumbers first come in, say six months or a year later, how much does their pay increase? Because they've learned more, they're doing it better. They're, they've getting, they're getting the SOPs down and, and making things happen. I mean, anytime that you can become more efficient because you know how to do something better, it's going to uh, equate to more in your pay, uh, no matter what type of pay scale you're on, whether you're hourly and all that task-based pay, however you're paid. Um, but the more efficient that you are and the more knowledge that you have, you'll be able to educate homeowners better on why they need to replace this or why this needs to be repaired, um, which is going to end up helping not only your uh, compensation, but business as well. And, and it helps the homeowner out with um, being able to have confidence that the person talking to them knows what they're talking about and can actually fix the problem. And, and I love this. Y'all have got quite a bit of plumbers mm -hmm. and y'all figured out marketing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how to make the phone ring. What do y'all do on an everyday basis to keep everybody busy, to keep your plumbers to where it's not, Hey, they come in Monday and they're slammed come in Tuesday. There's nothing to do. They go home Wednesday. They wake up to call to see if they even need to come in. How do you keep your plumbers busy each and every day? Uh, well, you got to know how many mouths you have to feed. So we know exactly how many calls that we need per day to keep everybody busy, uh, but not so busy that they can't enjoy life. Um, so we were real big at Milestone on uh, work-life balance. Um, we don't really want any of our guys running a call after 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, that means that they're not probably going to get home till 7 or 8. Uh, so we do our very best to make sure that they're leaving their last call before 5, 5 o'clock at night. Um, so that they can be home to their families. Um, but in order to do that, we have to have business form as well. So we know that we have to have X amount of calls on the board. So we market the way that we need to market uh, through all the different avenues that we do. I'm sure you see us on TV, um, but we have radio spots. We do um, uh, OTT, which is uh, more like social media stuff. And then we also do uh, pay-per-click. So we're on, on the online and you can uh, Google us, or if you say, uh, electrician or plumber in Dallas will be popping up on there. So we do all those things in order to keep our guys busy. And we, we actually probably have too much coming in and um, have to turn away people. Unfortunately, um, it's much, I'd, I'd rather apologize that we couldn't get out there than have to apologize to my tech the next day that I made him work and stay away from his family till nine, 10 o'clock at night. Now, do you have on-call plumbers or plumbers that come in later and work later or anything like that? Or is it pretty much just a normal nine to five type deal. So what we found, um, for us anyways, is that, uh, working on call, um, just upset everybody. Um, cause it was hard to make that rotation work. Everybody that was on call ended up having to come in and work a regular day, then get called out. Uh, we thought about doing the shift work as well. Um, but we really found out that most homeowners were fine with, if we worked up until the, the our end of day, which is about five. Um, and, uh, emergency came in after hours, we would just put them as priority in the morning. Um, because most of our guys are going out there, stopping the bleeding that night and coming back the next day anyway. So we were just exhausting manpower at that point. Um, and we weren't really making repairs at night. So we figured, okay, we'll just put you on your first priority in the morning. We'll get out to you. And we get about three or four of those calls a night. Um, and then instead of doing on-call, we just did a rotating Saturday schedule because most homeowners, we were, we didn't, we did on-call, but not, didn't work Saturdays. So now we have a rotating Saturday schedule where um, a group of guys will work that their designated Saturday and there's four groups. So once a month you have to work a Saturday and that seems to work out really good because now both homeowners are home. Uh, so we're getting to talk to the husband and Absolutely. the wife. Absolutely. So it works Great out really good. I love that. Well, good. Anybody that wanted to go to work with Milestone or anything like that or get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you at Milestone? Um, you can go ahead and uh, Google Milestone. Uh, that's probably the best way. Check out our website. Um, milestone home services. And then um, uh, if you have the number from uh, either the TV spots or you see our trucks on the road, uh, I wish I would have had the number memorized. I probably got it in my phone somewhere. We should have created a special yeah. number for yeah. Roger for everybody that's been on air. <laughs> but um, easiest way, just, just Google milestone. Um, our website's on there. It has all of our stuff as far as whether you want to um, check out what we offer all the way to uh, employment opportunities. So go ahead and check us out online. Great place to work. They understand what's going on. Gus has put together a phenomenal culture-based company that, man, they're doing things really well. So, Scott, thank yeah. you for being here. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Guys, think about it. Becoming a better trained plumber, getting hired, and staying at a company and learning and growing can be a great opportunity for you. If you love this video, 
Check out this next one. I think you'll like it too.